Owls and the Family. Chapter One. One May morning, my friend Bruce and I went for a hike on the prairie. Spring was late that year in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Snowdrifts still clung around the steep banks of the river in the shelter of the cottonwood trees. The river was icy with thaw water, and as we crossed over the railroad bridge, we could feel a cold breath rising from it. But we felt another breath, a gentle one, blowing across the distant wheat field and smelling like warm sun shining on soft mud. It was the spring wind, the wind, the smell of it made us walk faster. We were in a hurry to get out of the city and into the real prairie, where you can climb a fence post and see for about a million miles. That's how flat the prairie is. The great thing about Saskatoon was that you always it always ended sharp all around its edge. There are no outskirts to Saskatoon. When you stepped off the end of the railroad bridge, you stepped right onto the prairie, and there you were, free as a gopher. Gophers were the commonest thing on the prairie. The little mounds of yellow dirt around their burrows were so thick, sometimes it looked as if the fields had yellow measles. But this day... Bruce and I weren't interested in gophers. We were looking for an owl's nest. We had decided we wanted some pet owls, and if you want a pet owl, so you have to find a nest and get the young ones out of it. We headed for the nearest clumps of cottonwood trees that dot the prairies, and which are called bluffs out of the Saskatchewan. The ground was spongy under our sneakers, and it squished when we hit the wet places. A big jackrabbit bounced up right under my feet and scared me so much I almost jumped as high as he did. When we came near to the bluff, two crows came out, came out zooming out of it and swooped down on us, cawing their heads off. Bluffs are a funny place in the spring. The cottonwood tre trees shed their kind of white fluffy stuff that looks like snow. Sometimes it's so thick it comes right over the top of your sneakers and then you get this queer feeling that you are really walking through snow, even though the sun is on your back is making you sweat right through your shirt. We walked through this bluff, scuffling our feet in the cottonwood snow and stirring up it up in clouds. We kept looking, and after a while, sure enough, we saw a big mess of twigs high up in a poplar. All right, Bruce said, with the two crows still swooping and hollering at us. If you want me to snitch your eggs, I will. With that, he handed me his haversack and began shimmying up the tree. It was an easy climb because cottonwood poplars always have a lot of branches. When we get to the nest and looked into it, I yelled up at him, Any eggs? Bruce grinned, but he wouldn't answer. I could see him doing something with his free hand, the one that wasn't holding on with. And I knew there were eggs all right. I watched, and sure enough, he was popping them into his mouth so he could carry them down out of the tree. He was always carried eggs down out of the tree that way. The only thing was crow's eggs are pretty big, and if you have stuffed three or four of them in your mouth, it nearly chokes you. Bruce started to climb down. When he was about 10 feet away from the ground, he stepped on a rotten branch. Poplar trees are always rotten near the ground. You have to watch out for them. I guess Bruce forgot. Anyway, the branch broke and he slid the rest of the way and lit on his seat with a good hard bump. All the eggs had broken, and Bruce was spitting out shells and eggs over the cottonwood snow. I got laughing so hard I couldn't even talk. When Bruce got most of the eggs spat out, he came for me and tackled me, and we had a fight. It didn't last long because it was too hot to really fight, so Bruce ate a sardine sandwich to get the taste of crow's eggs out of his mouth, and when we started across the prairie again to search through the other bluff until we found an owl's nest. I guess we searched about a hundred bluffs that morning, but we never saw an owl. We were getting hungry by then, so we sort of made we made sort of a nest for ourselves on the ground out of the poplar snow and branches. We curled up curled up in it and opened our haversacks. Bruce had sandwiches and lem and a lemon in it. He was the only boy I ever knew who liked to eat lemons. He said they were better than oranges any day of the week. I had a hard-boiled egg, and just for fun, I reached over and cracked the shell on Bruce's head. He yelled, and we had another fight, and rolled all over his sardine sandwiches. We were just finishing our lunch when a wood gopher came snuffling along through the cottonwood snow. Wood gophers are gray and have big, bushy tails. This one came right up to us, and, and when I held the crest out to him, he shuffled up and took it out of my hand. You have no sense, said Bruce. You might have been a coyote, and then he'd be... Where'd he be? 
Heck, I said, he's got more sense than you. Do I look like a coyote? The gopher didn't say anything. He just took the crust and scuttled away into his hole somewhere. We picked up our haversacks. The sun was the sun was as bright as a firework, and the sky was so clear you could look right through it, looking through the blue window. We started to walk. All of a sudden, Bruce stopped so fast that I bumped into him. Looky, he said, and pointed to a bluff about a half a mile away. There must have been a million crows around it. It looked as if the bluff was on fire and filling the sky with black smoke. That's how many crows there were. When you see a bunch of crows all yelling their heads off at something, you can all bet that they're after an owl. Crows and owls hate each other. And when a crow spots an owl, he'll call every other crow for miles and they'll all join the mob, join, join in and mob the owl. We headed for that bluff at a run. The crows saw us coming, but they were too excited to pay much attention. They were nearly death with their racket. By the time we reached the edge of the trees, I was ahead of Bruce, and when I saw something big and slow go drifting out of one poplar into another, it was a great horned owl, the biggest kind of owl there is. And as soon as it flew, the whole lot of crows came swooping down and calling like fury. I noticed that they were careful not to get too close. Bruce and I started to hunt for the nest. After a while, the owl got more worried about us than the crows, and went away he went. He flew low over the field, almost touching the ground. That way, crows couldn't dive on him. And if they tried it, they would shoot past him and crash into the dirt. There wasn't any owl's nest in that bluff after all, but we didn't worry. We knew that the nest would have, would have to be in some bluff not too far away. All we had to do was look. We looked in different bluffs all afternoon. We found seven crow's nests, a red-tailed hawk's nest, and three magpie's nests. I tore the seat of my trousers climbing up the hawk's nest, and we both got Russian thistles all in our sneakers. We had sore feet. It had gotten hotter and hotter, and we were so thirsty I could have eaten a lemon myself, except that Bruce didn't have any more. It was past supper time when we started back toward the railroad. By, the, by then, we were pretending we were a couple of Arabs lost in the desert. Our camels had died of thirst, and we were going to die too soon unless we found some water. Listen, Bruce said, there's an old well out of the Holliton Corner. If we cut over past Barney's Slough to the sec section road, we can get a drink. Too late, I told him. Goodbye, old pal, old sheik. I'm doomed. Go on, lay me to leave. Oh, nuts, said Bruce. I'm thirsty. Come on, let's go. So we cut past Barney Slough, and there are about a thousand mallard ducks on it. They all jumped into the air as we went by, and their wings made a sound like a freight train over the bridge. Wish I had my dad's gun, said Bruce. But I was still wondering why on the praise they called lakes and ponds sloughs. I don't, un I still don't know, but that's what they're called in Saskatoon. There was one big bluff between us and Halton Corner. It was too far to go around it, so we walked right through it. Anyway, it was cooler among the trees. When we were about halfway through, I spotted a crow's nest in a big old cottonwood. Bet it's empty, I said to Bruce. But the truth was, I was just too tired, hot and tired, to climb any more trees. Bruce felt the same way, and we walked past. But I took one last look up at it, and there, sticking over the edge of the nest, was the biggest bunch of tail feathers you ever saw. My heart jumped right into my throat. I grabbed Bruce by the shirt and pointed up. It was a great horned owl, all right. We kept as quiet as we could, so as not to scare her. And then we looked around at the bottom of the tree. There are bits of rabbits and gophers and lots of owl pellets. When owls catch something, they eat, they eat it whole, furs and fur and all. And then after a while, they burp and spit out a ball of hair and bone. That's an owl pellet. By gang, we found it, Bruce whispered. I found it, I said. Okay, said Bruce, you found it then. So how about you climbing up and seeing how many young ones there are? Nothing doing, pal, I replied. I found the nest, so if you want one of the owlets, you climb up and have a look. Neither of us was keen to climb that tree. The old owl was sticking close to her nest, and you can always tell how fierce an owl is going to be. They can be fierce sometimes. Say, said Bruce after a while, why don't we just have to leave her for now? Might scare her into leaving the nest for good if we climb up. What say we get Mr. Miller and come back tomorrow? 
Mr. Miller was one of our teachers. Bruce and I liked him because I, he liked the prairie too. He was, one, he was a great one for taking pictures of birds and things. We knew he would be crazy to get some pictures of an owl, and Mr. Miller never minded climbing trees. Sure, I said, good idea. We went off to the Halton Corner and got a drink of water that tasted like old nails out of a broken pump. Then we walked on home. That night I told Dad about the owl's nest, and he looked at Mother, and all he said was, Oh, no, not owls, too.